Hello there and welcome friends, today's guide will be all about the Rogue class. Rogues can be extremely useful in the Pathfinder games, because their main class feature, Sneak Attack, well, works on pretty much every single enemy. It's not like Dungeons and Dragons 3rd edition where Undead and a lot of other enemies used to be immune to Sneak Attack, so no matter the enemy you are facing, your Rogue will be at their full power. Combine that with the numerous attacks per round they can get from dual building, and well, your rogue will easily become a very big damage dealer for your party. For this guide I have brought you two different styles of rogue builds. The first, a rowdy rogue, an unique archetype in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, that fights with a two-handed weapon and also uses the Vital Strike line of feats for massive amounts of damage. And also, the classic dual wielding sneak attack focused rogue, in this case a knife master, that has an extreme amount of attacks per round, with insane critical range because of the Trickster Mythic Path. So let us first get started with our Knife Master Rogue, a build that is more along the lines of the classic dual wielding, backstabbing, sneak attack focused rogue. For those that play Kingmaker, this is the same archetype that Knock Knock the Goblin has, and it is certainly very strong. You have full sneak attack progression, a massive number of bonus feats, this is the same for most of the rogues in Pathfinder. And the most important feature is the Sneak Stab, which turns all your sneak attack dice when attacking with dagger-like weapons such as Kukri, Punching Dagger, Star Knife, and even Sai, into D8. So that's a lot of more damage we're going to add to our rogue, considering we do get 10 whole dice of sneak attack at max level, and a few others from spells and other features. As usual, I like to go with Human, and this is going to help with Knife Master, because we do get to pick an extra feat. For the background, pickpocket as usual for initiative. For ability points, 19 dexterity, 14 constitution. I would go with at least 12 intelligence so we can later get the trickster spellbook. And we are going trickster with this build to maximize our criticals. As for the last of the points, well I imagine you can go with 14 intelligence actually and just put 12 into strength so you get a little more damage on level 1 and level 2, before we'll get the finesse training ability at level 3. Strength will also help us with encumbrance, but you can also put this in wisdom or charisma, but it won't really make that much of a difference. As far as skill points, well as the classic rogue you certainly want trickery, stealth, use magic device, perception for trap detecting, mobility because of our high dexterity, and the other two are up to you, I'll be going with athletics, and also knowledge world. But you can pick Persuasion as well if you want, although we won't be getting high charisma. Now as far as your level 1 feats, the first one should certainly be martial weapons proficiency. Kukris are actually martial weapons, so most of the rogue archetypes won't get this for free. Because of how crazy good they are, it's certainly worth the feat investment. And for a second feat, two weapon fighting of course. Deity choice is up to you, but I do recommend you pick one that has the trickster alignment. Caden, for example, is fine, so we can be chaotic good. We'll win this, one way or the other. As soon as level 2, we already get a rogue bonus feat. Now you might ask why I'm not going with Weakening Wound. While this ability can help you during chapter 1, well, as soon as chapter 2 starts, we can get a storyteller relic that basically lets the attacks of all our party members, pets included, pierce demons' physical resistance to damage, so I find Weakening Wound a bit of a waste. My favorite early pick would be Combat Reflexes, after all we do have extreme dexterity, which means a very big amount of attacks of opportunity per round, especially after we get Outflank, Seize the Moment, and also the Ever Ready Mythic ability. Even without these teamwork feats, Combat Reflexes still help us make attacks of opportunity while flat-footed, which can be great if we roll low on initiative. For our level 3 feat, I would go with Shake It Off, assuming you are also going to pick it on some of your other characters and pets. Rogues have very low will, so this can help them overcome some very annoying mind-affecting status ailments in the early game. Well, they also have low fortitude, so overall it can be a great pick. And level 3 is when I also pick it for my other party members. Now we have our finesse training, so we can actually benefit from dexterity to damage. And of course we have to pick Kukri. At level 4, increase your dexterity, and this is also what we will increase on all of the other levels. At level 4, because we now have dexterity to do damage, I would pick double slice to increase our offhand damage. And while it says strength here, this will also work with dexterity if you have finesse training or mythic finesse. At level 5, go with weapon focus and then kukri. At level 6, combat trick. Well, you can actually already pick out flank here if you have other high base attack bonus characters like Scylla 
who can pick it earlier, but most of my characters only pick out flank at level 7, pets included, so this is why I'll save it for level 7, after all this feat has no use if you are the only character that has it, it is a teamwork feat. And this is why for level 6 I actually like going with Piranha Strike. This is basically power attack, except it has a dexterity requirement instead of strength. Now if you are playing on let's say hard and unfair, I wouldn't bother turning this on until you get let's say level 9, 10 and so on, where you can actually get higher buffs to your attack bonus, so the penalty won't hit you as hard. This will eventually give you a lot of extra damage, especially when you consider dual wielding. At level 7, outflank of course. At level 8, go with combat trick and improve at your weapon fighting. At level 9, seize the moment to finish our attack of opportunity boosting feats. And this is also the level I tend to get it on my other characters. Starting from level 10, our knife master will have access to the stronger rogue talents, so the advanced talents, and the best one to pick early, in my opinion, is certainly opportunist. So whenever an ally hits an enemy in melee, you get a free attack of opportunity with your rogue on that same target, although it is limited to once per round. Even then it's still extremely strong because it's well basically a free attack, and when you combine this with our high number of attacks per round through dual wielding, and also the other attacks of opportunities we are going to generate from outflanking since the moment. Well, let's say you end up with a massive number of attacks. At level 11, be sure to pick Incurved Critical and then Kukris. So now our Kukris have 15 to 20 critical range, which is very good. But we are of course going to increase it even further through the aid of the Trickster Mythic Path. As far as your second finesse training, well, honestly... If you have a Scald, then I would go with Bite, because Scalds can give you an extra Bite attack. The same for characters like Ember, who as a Witch, at around the same level, can also give you another Bite attack to the Beast's Gift Hex. So basically that's an extra 2 Bite attacks, and they do stack with one another. That will work based on your Dexterity. I don't see much of a point in any of the other choices, unless you're planning on wielding other weapons than Kukri's, but there's not a reason to do so. At least not for this build. For a level 12 talent, I would pick Wearing Strike. Whenever you hit the enemy with a sneak attack, they will also suffer 1 point of constitution damage that does stack and has no save, so perfect for hard and unfair. Now the beauty about constitution damage is that it will eventually drain the enemy of hit points. And because we are dual wielding, well, we have a lot of attacks per round that will also proc sneak attack and the constitution damage. Just be aware that some of the bosses are actually immune to ability damage and you can easily check that by just looking up their sheet in combat. Now before getting to level 13, as usual, for a trickster character remember to get both perception 1 and perception 2 rank at mythic rank 4 so you can get access to the special trickster feats, which is what we'll be getting now. So for level 13, as I've just said, Improve at Improve at Critical and then Kugri. For your level 14 talent, I would go with Dispelling Attack. With this, you can basically attempt to dispel the enemy of a beneficial effect whenever you strike them with a sneak attack. Considering how numerous our attacks are per round, especially when aided by attacks of opportunity, chances are we will be dispelling some of the enemy's buffs and the check takes our character level as if caster level. It's not that high against the late game enemies, but once again, because it is on hit, it's basically a free effect. For level 15, now, don't pick greatest weapon fighting now, Wait until your bonus talent at level 16 to pick it. The reason is that we want to pick Improved 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 Critical Kukri instead. Because we can only get the Trickster special feats as a rogue during our main level up feats. You cannot get them to the bonus talents and combat feats that rogue gets. So as I've just said, for level 16, combat trick and then greater to weapon fighting. For our level 17 feat, the last special trickster critical feat. For an increase in our critical multiplier. So for your level 18 bonus talent, I would pick Improved Initiative. At level 19, Arcane Strike for the bonus to damage, as by this point we already have access to the Trickster Spellbook, so we do have caster levels to make use of this. Now for level 19, you can actually go with something like Completely Normal Spell if you pick the Trickster Spellbook, to gain more versatility in your spell slots and also turn some interesting level 1 spells into infinite use cantrips like True Strike. And you can even pick something like Dazzling Display at level 18, and then Shatter Defenses. As for another finesse training, <laughs> it doesn't really matter at all. You can pick anything. I imagine you can go with something like daggers, as there are some decent daggers in the game for Wojif. Now at level 12, well, <laughs> there isn't actually a point in going rogue, because the Master Strike capstone ability is kinda underwhelming. 
You can, for example, take the ever so infamous vivisectionist tip for the mutagen that's going to give you plus 4 to dexterity, very powerful. Or even pick another class like Ranger and then Demon Slayer for the plus 2 boost to attack bonus and damage against demons. Honestly, I'll keep it simple, so I'll be going with 12 Knife Master. As for your last talent, it can be anything as I said before. Improved Evasion, for example, can be useful, but we do have very high reflex, so I think Evasion is more than enough. I'll pick the Hair Familiar just for even higher initiative. Alright, now let's talk about Mythic Progression for our Knife Master Rogue. As usual, I recommend you go with Instrument of Freedom, as this can be a pretty powerful buff for your party members, you cannot cast this on yourself. But you can even go with something like Close to the Abyss for an extra gore attack, or Bit of Fun for a plus 3 circumstance bonus to your skill checks. Still, I would rather go with Instrument of Freedom, as it does KO in uses and also duration with each of your mythic ranks. For our first mythic ability, ever ready, to empower our attacks of opportunity. Now if you are playing on let's say unfair, then you might consider the last stand mythic ability this early, especially if this is your main character, after all it is game over if you die. But there are ways to, well, overcome that as a rogue and I will explain how to keep your rogue healthy and, and at no risk of death in the how to play it section of this guide. As for mythic rank 2, mythic to weapon fighting to increase the attack bonus of all our attacks by plus 2 when dual wielding. As for Mythic level 3, Elemental Barrage of course, this is very close to chapter 3, which is when we get our extremely overpowered Triple Element Kukri, which does make proccing Elemental Barrage very easy on your main hand attacks. As for your first Mythic trick, Arcana 1 as usual. Now for Mythic rank 4, Improved Critical Mythic and Kukri of course. After that, Perception rank 1 and also Perception rank 2 to gain access to the special trickster feats that will highly increase our critical chance and damage. Now at mythic rank 5 is when I would pick last stand. Just remember if you are playing on hard and unfair and finding it hard to keep your character alive, you can pick this on level 1 and then pick ever ready on mythic rank 5 instead. For a mythic trick, athletics rank 1. For mythic rank 6, mythic piranha strike. And also infuse magic device and reuse magic device so we can pick the wizard spell book at the next mythic level. So for mythic level 7, well we have a few different choices, I like to leave inspirational leader and leading strike for my companions like Scylla, you can already go with archmage armor here for more armor class, or unrelenting assault for more damage, and this does have neat synergy with dual wielding, after all we gain the bonus to both our main hand and off hand, so this is what I'll pick now. Mythic Charge can also be useful if you like the charge playing style. As for tricks, Knowledge World 1, and of course use Magic Device rank 3 for our Wizard Spellbook, that scales equal to our total character level, no matter our class. For Mythic rank 8, I'll personally be going with Mythic Sneak Attacker, after all, as a Knife Master, we do gain enhanced damage on sneak attacks, so we want as many of them as possible. For another trick, Trickery 1 rank. As for Improved Trick, Knowledge World 2, so we turn our 1s into 20s. Perfect for passing saves and also turning auto misses into auto hits and even critical hits. As for your last mythic ability at level 9, well, Archmage Armor for more armor class, but remember you can also pick something else like Mythic Charge. Also pick Religion rank 1 and then Trickery rank 2. The reason I pick the Trickery feats here is that you can actually attempt you a Trickery check to dispel all of the effects on the enemy, and this is actually perfect both for the final boss and some of the late boss enemies that start with quite a lot of buffs. Alright, so let's talk now about our rowdy rogue two-handed Vital Strike Cleaver character, who will be going the Azata Mythic Path for the synergy with the Vital Strike ability, and this is where Rowdy comes into play. Rowdy Rogue is truly unique in that you gain all of the Vital Strike line of feats for free, and the interesting part is you actually gain them before even fighter characters or characters with high base attack bonus would be able to achieve them. For example, they would only get greater vital strike minimum at level 16. As a rowdy, we can get it as soon as level 11, so that's quite the difference. We also gain the vital force special ability, so that whenever we use vital strike, we add 2d6 additional damage per sneak attack die. That's quite a lot considering how many sneak attack die we are going to get. Lastly, Rowdy Rogues surprisingly have the Martial Weapons Proficiency feat for free. So let's get started, as usual, Human for the bonus feat, and just like our 
Knife Master, we do actually need this extra feat at early levels. For the backgrounds, pickpocket, no doubt. As for attributes, close to our Knife Master, but we don't actually need dexterity, so we'll be going with 19 strength, 12 dexterity, 14 constitution, and the rest of the points are up to you. We can actually go for 14 dexterity here. And then something like 12 wisdom or 12 intelligence, depending on if you want an extra skill point or not. Wisdom will just be to increase our will saving throws. For skill points, athletics, mobility, trickery, stealth, and perception. So we can still cover the main rogue skills of unlocking chests and detecting traps and disarming them. Now for your feats, this will be a build focused on false shards. Yes, I know, another false shard build. But what can I say, false shards are amazing weapons. And I already have a guide explaining why they are so good and all of the best ones in the game. For a two-hander build focused on vital strike, false shards are of extreme importance. The reach weapon means you can actually cleave enemies from far away. And as vital strike, we are limited to one action per round besides the aura attacks of opportunity and cleaves. Not to mention all of the extra safety you get in the early game by attacking the enemy far away behind your tanks and frontline characters. Anyways, power attack and then cleave as usual. We can't actually use cleave together with vital strike, but it is a prerequisite for the cleaving finish feat, which does work with vital strike and we'll be getting this right after. Just a note that in the early game you don't actually have to use four shards. I will actually only bother with four shards starting from around level 5 or so. I suggest you go with glaives during the early game, after all there is, well, a massive amount of good glaives, especially in chapter 1. As a matter of fact, as soon as the first dungeon you already start finding master war glaives. And they are also rich weapons, although they have somewhat disappointing critical range, nowhere as good as four shards. For dainty, because we are going Azata, any that is compatible with the Azata alignments. I'll go with Kaden as usual for chaotic good. Let's make our Rowdy Rogue look, look like a proper tug and we can get started. For our level 2 talent, Combat Trick and Cleaving Finish. This is actually great because as soon as level 2, even when applying Vital Strike, if you kill an enemy and chances are you will kill them because of the huge damage, you'll also get another free attack, thus bypassing the limitation of just a single attack per Vital Strike. For level 3, I would go with Shake It Off as usual, as we do have disappointing will saving throws. At level 4, increase your strength, and this is also what you increase on all of the other levels. For a level 4 talent, go with Combat Reflexes to get started on our Attack of Opportunity feats. Now for level 5, go with Great Cleave so we can later pick Improved Cleaving Finish for even more attacks when our Vital Strike kills the enemy. For a level 6 bonus talent, Combat Trick. And this is when I would actually get started into Fall Shards, so Exotic Weapon Proficiency and Fall Shard. As I said before, Fall Shards have way better critical range than Glaives, and because our Vital Strike damage is increased on a critical hit, we certainly want to benefit from that. And this is also great because it is when we get Improved Vital Strike for even more damage. For level 7, Outflank of course, Remember that even though we are limited to just a single action with Vital Strike, we can bypass that through attacks of opportunity, and Outflank will help with that. For level 8 talent, Improved Cleaving Finish. As for level 9, seize the moment of course to finish our powerful attack of opportunity feats. As for level 10, just like with my Knife Master, Opportunist for a very powerful free attack per round. Which does work with Vital Strike, because it is an attack of opportunity. As for level 11, of course, Improved Critical, and Fall Shard. Now this is also when we gain the very powerful Greater Vital Strike, the last in the Vital Strike line of feats, for massive amounts of damage. Now from level 12 onwards, you actually have a few different choices for our Rowdy Rogue. You can continue progression into Rowdy, but I don't find it needed because the Rowdy Capstone is disappointing, Master Strike. Also, our remaining advanced talents are somewhat underwhelming as well. They are much better off left for characters that have a very big number of attacks, such as Wearing Strike. My favorite choice for multiclassing from this point onwards is actually Alchemist and then Vivisectionist. This way we can get a very powerful Mutagen for an increase to our strength and armor class. We still get a lot of bonus feats. And lastly, we still maintain our sneak attack progression. It will reduce our base attack bonus progression by around minus one, which doesn't matter because with Vital Strike, we only have a single attack per round anyways. So let us pick Vivisectionist. Vivisectionist will also give us a few useful spells, True Strike certainly being the most useful one. And we certainly don't want our Vital Strike to miss, because we only have a single. With this spell, it is sure to hit. For our level 13 feat, I would keep it simple and just go with Improved Initiative. 
After all, the sooner we can get our first vital strike going, the better for us. For a medical discovery, combat trick, weapon focus, and then fall shard. For a level 15 feat, dazzling display, and then as a medical discovery, combat trick, and shatter defenses. This is actually perfect for us because level 15 is when our casters get access to the frightful aspect spell, which will allow us to automatically proc shatter defenses, even on unfair. So at level 17, well honestly, the crazy part about being a rowdy rogue and also a vivisection is is that we have so many bonus feats that at this point we actually pick the best ones the game has to offer at least for our character type you can go with well blind fight and also infusion to buff your party members with some of the good level 1 alchemist spells like true strike and shield and this is what I'll pick infusion honestly at level 19 because we already have 10 die of sneak attack so 4 from vivid sectionist and 6 from rowdy rogue this is basically the maximum of 10, which is half our character level, or will be at level 20. You can actually go with another class, so for example, Ranger, and then Demon Slayer, so we get the bonus to attack and damage against demons. Now remember that, as I said before, you don't have to multi-class, you can keep, for example, Rowdy Rogue up to level 20. I'll be going with Demon Slayer for fun, as my builds tend to be pure class, so why not do something different for once? As for a level 19 feat, it can be anything, for example, you can go with Improved Blind Fight, although as an Azata we do get the Echo Location spell, which lets you bypass enemy concealment anyways, or even something as simple as Toughness. So why not? For level 20, I'll keep it to Vivisectionist, the last point in strength, and your last feat can really be anything. I'll keep it simple and just pick Dodge, although Armor Class doesn't really matter for us. Alright, now let's talk Mythic Progression for our Azata Rowdy Rogue. As usual, Instrument of Freedom for your first Ascension ability. As for your first Mythic ability, I strongly suggest you go with Always a Chance. I don't tend to pick this often, but in the case of our Vital Strike Rogue, we only get a single Vital Strike and we don't want that to miss, so this will help with that. After all, if you roll a 1, it won't be an automatic miss anymore. For Mythic Rank 2, Mythic Vital Strike. Mythic Rank 3, Ever Ready. Remember that we do get attacks of opportunities even after using Vital Strike. For Mythic Rank 4, Improved Mythic Critical Fall Shard as usual. As for our first superpower, be sure to go with Zippy Magic because this will let your Vital Strike change to a nearby enemy for even more damage. And remember, I already have an Azata guide explaining all of these abilities, so I'll try to keep it simple for this guide. For Mythic Level 5, I would go with Last Stand. We do have a reach weapon and can attack while in large, so chances are the enemy won't hit us, but oh well, why not, last stand is very useful regardless. For mythic rank 6, mythic power attack, and also incredible might. I suppose you might as well go with unrelenting assault for more damage. For mythic rank 8, mythic improved initiative, but you can also go with mythic sneak attacker. As for your final superpower, I would pick life bonding friendship and then precise strike. Now at level 9, so basically our last mythic, <laughs> you can really go with anything. I'll go with Archmage Armor just for even higher armor class. As for another life bonding friendship feat, Allied Spellcaster. Or also back to back for higher armor class to all our characters. Alright, now let's talk gear for our Knife Master and also Rowdy Rogue. They're going to be similar for most slots. For both of them, they'll access magnifying amulet for the amulet slot. And they don't actually need to wear any armor, so Haramakis are what I would recommend. Haramaki of Divine Guidance, for example, for plus 4 sacred to all saving throws. Any robe you want, I like black and rags because it looks cool. Now as far as the belt slot, well, if you have a scald during the end game, then certainly Mangling Frenzy belt for both characters for the extra damage for the 6 quite a lot on every critical hit. Otherwise, for your Knife Master, during the end game, I like the Clutch of Corruption for the very big plus 8 to Constitution, but for the early and mid game, bells that increase either your Dexterity or both your Dexterity and Constitution. As far as gloves, you have a few different choices. For the Knife Master, Fencer's Gift Gloves can give you an extra boost to damage when while wielding, but late game you can also use the Treacherous Flame Gloves to turn enemies hit by your sneak attacks vulnerable to fire and also even give them a very big minus 3 penalty to all saves. You can find this through the crusade relic the fire of Baphomet only during chapter 5. For the boot slot, Rolex sacrifice of course for the extreme boost to dexterity and this is why I use the clutch of corruption instead of a dexterity belt. 
As for headbands or helmets, during the early to mid game you can use something like demonic resentment if you have a scald, or headgear with different benefits such as increased two hit points, or more armor class. Now from chapter 5 onwards, your knife master who does get the trickster spellbook should certainly use headbands of intelligence. For the goggle slots, I'm using the rascal goggles for the big boost to perception and trickery. Cloaks of resistance as usual, the ring of guiding star as well. We already gain evasion for both our rogues, so there's no need to get the ring of evasion. And Marty's testament can also be a powerful ring because of immunity to mind affecting conditions. So even if our will is somewhat low, it won't matter. As for braces, well, the braces of heavy hand for our knife master, because we gain a bonus to damage when dual wielding. As for Kukris, I have just recently released a guide on the best Kukris in the game, so you can watch that. But basically, the shock flaming corrosive called Iron Kukri plus 3 for easy elemental barrage proccing, and also the astringent pacifier on your offhand. As far as quick slots, the Wand of Heal, because as a trickster with use magic device rank 2 trick, we have infinite uses of this for very easy healing. The Dragon Familiar Jarxigax for more elemental damage on hit. The Signet of House Vespertilio to increase our ranks in let's say trickery or athletics. And a greater quick and meta magic rod to easily cast the ultimate trick fate trickster spell even during battle. But you can also prep both of this before battle starts as it does have a 3 round duration which is more than enough. Now for our Raldi Rogue most slots are the same. The main difference comes in the case of the helmet, of course we want Shy Lily for the profane bonus to strength and AC, I also already have a guide on how to get it. You can use the goggles of piercing gaze for the insight bonus against demons and outsiders, we don't really need any armor as I said before, but you can certainly make do in the early game with mithril chain shirts, such as the Lady Calandra mithril chain shirt that you can find in the Tower of Esrod as soon as chapter 1. As for belts, well belts that increase strength and constitution. The glove slot is different as well because we aren't dual wielding. In this case I like the gloves of death dealer for the extra sneak attack damage. The same for bracers, so bracers of abrupt onslaught once again for even more sneak attack. As far as weapons we'll be using well in the early game glaives and there are some very easy to find glaives in chapter 1. As for when we get four shards well I also have a guide on the best four shards and how to get them. But for the late game, the Mighty Blow of Good, or the last version of Finia. Now as for how to play the builds, well it's pretty simple. As with most melee characters, for your Knife Master. In the upper mid to late game you can certainly tank just as well with all of the buffs and abilities you have. But for the early game and up to chapter 3, you certainly want to send your tanks ahead of you. For example, I'll send my pets here the and here guide my after blade. the enemy. So they are going towards the enemy. The enemies are now going to focus their attacks on them first. After that, simply flank the enemy with your rogue. I got this. So you can deal huge amounts of damage and still retain safety. Let's see how it goes. So the other locusts here are still attacking our tanks, and we can just flank it again with our rogue. Damn you! Got? My cat could do better. <laughs> Look at all the procs of damage we get. Now as for our Raldi Rogue two-handed character, the playstyle is just a little bit different. As soon as level 1 you certainly want to, to set your strongest version of Vital Strike to autocast by just right clicking it with the mouse button so it appears down here. This way whenever we attack it's going to be a Vital Strike. We have not only a rich weapon, glaive and then for shard, and you can have characters like Amelia, Nanio or Wojif cast enlarged person on yourself as soon as the early level so you gain even higher reach. For example, my reach is this huge yellow circle surrounding my character around here. The rest is simple, just send your tanks and pets ahead I'm and attack with your Azata Cleaver. Just like this. I got this. Can we retreat already? Notice how we attack from very far away. And with just one hit we got a critical hit of 1630 damage and another critical hit of 1000 and a very special 666 damage. Because we are an Azata with the ZP magic ability our vital strike actually chained to two enemies instead of hitting just one. And we do get a lot of extra damage because of our vital force ability that increases the sneak attack of our vital strike. As you can see here 24 to 6. 
and 12 d6. And notice how we can actually get, make attacks of opportunity even after using Vital Strike, but they will be as if a normal hit from our weapon, which can critical hit. Meanwhile, for our Knife Master Rogue, we dealt around 500 damage on our critical hit. 115 just from Sneak Attack, 22 d8, because we have the special Sneak Stab ability. And then all of the secondary hits that also come from our single attack. So 96 from Elemental Barrage here. And because we actually have so many elements on our weapon, triple elements on our main Kukri, and then another element from Firebrand and another from Genikind, we can actually proc Elemental Barrage twice. So the first here and the other one right here, another 96. Once again, all from just a single attack. Alright, so this was it for my rules guide. I do hope with these two builds I managed to show you how powerful the rogue class can be in the game. If you've enjoyed this video then please be sure to like, subscribe and even become a member for some exclusive perks. If you have other ways of building your rogue then please be sure to comment down below. Thank you for watching and see you next time friends!